Welcome everybody here to our next webinar at JFT Bank. Today we have the 22nd of January 2020 and it's a pleasure for me to have you all here to the new format Statistic Radar. So my name, by the way, is uh, Stefan Friedrichowski, and um, if you like, you see already my contact here. You can drop me a line if you have any further questions, or you can use the GoToWebinar control panel to have uh, questions here online. But um, if you have questions later, no problem, just drop me a note at s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com. So today, webinar is just a short one just a half an hour and it's called statistic radar okay you might not know what we do today but um, it's uh, good that you are here and i hope you can enjoy that kind of view on the market so another title would have been market state so in general, we look to the global markets, uh, mainly Forex, but we will have a look on gold and uh, some indices, uh, DAX and S&P 500 as well. It's, it's more a view from a statistical point of view. It's looking for trading opportunities purely derived by statistics. And I will brief you with um, what you can learn here, of course. But finally, it's about trends where are the biggest one where to jump into a long-term trend or even a short term we look we will look on different time scales so it's really looking to trading opportunities short term and long term and you might use that kind of knowledge for your daily trading activities okay but before i really start you know i have to show the risk disclaimer at least once during any webinar so we talk about trading we talk about investment trading opportunities but finally any decision is simply by your own and by your own responsibility i think that's quite self-explaining and uh, of course uh, you know you know that to give you just one slide as an introduction of what we really do and you will need a little bit about the lower part of that slide to interpret uh, later any charts and um, any tables so but let really let's start so we will start with a market overview but in terms of volatility in terms of trends in terms of sidewards behavior so the reason for for looking exactly to those three things is quite simple to some extent we need volatility okay N not always if you have a very good long-term trend without high volatility even that might be better but overall one can state without any volatility it's always more difficult to trade sometimes the, uh, the opposite is even more true. If volatility goes extremely up, then it might be that you use two, um, two tight stop losses and you are kicked out of trades very fast. So volatility has really two, two sides of the metal uh, of the coin, but um, you know that. So therefore we look for volatility. Of course we look for trends because I know that most of people are trend trader therefore that is interesting for you definitely but you might have even strategies for sidewards markets which is a quite cool thing because um, markets are more often in sidewards movements than in a really good trend we will see that in total we look as uh, explained already forex go dax and s p 500 and we derive trading possibilities on different time frames and just to brief you, because we, you need those numbers. You, later you will see that I derive everything on an H1 period. You may think, oops, hey, we have different one. We have M5, D1, H4, whatever. Yes, you are right, but I can use just H1 and then look on different periods. So if I look for 120 h1 candles that represents a week and that is a good history to do trading decisions for the trading time frame m5 up to h1 
And if I look for an H1 period, you will see a look for later for trends and uh, regression. Um, so that is a slope of, uh, of, of a chart um, with a period of 480. Okay, that represents one month's data. So that might be suitable for H1 and H4 timeframes. And then further down the road, 1560 represents one quarter and 6240 represents one year so that's really long term that might be good for trading decisions on d1 and even on weekly we characterize everything just with five colors colors finally and those five one and what you have to keep in mind red is not an alarm signal no it just means small for example Volatility is small, light red, not that small, and so on and so forth. And green means very big. In terms of trends, then it's interesting to have, for example, a red simply means, hey, that's a good downtrend that goes south. And totally green, that would be, hey, that goes up and really strong. And yellow would mean, hey, there is no trend. So. Maybe you do a screenshot of that um, because we will need uh, those colors or the, the, the what's behind uh, more often. But now, normally, um, oh no, normally we would do a chart analysis more like uh, this one. Okay, you know, we would look to charts and um, different symbols, different time frames, and now we will look, hey, what's happening? Um, but that's always quite difficult because we would need different charts, M5, up to maybe D1, because just a single view on M5 is not good enough. And the other thing is always, okay, it looks like Euro Swiss franc, hey, has a good uptrend. Yeah, but maybe that's not, it's only within that range here. So it's really difficult to say it's really a good trend up. We have to compare it. We have to, to really get numbers out of that. And therefore, we do it different. And let's start with that. So overall, honestly, that kind of chart is the mother of all my charts. What is this in here? We are looking to the ATR, the um, average true range, which is a good representation of any uh, volatility. And I really start here with a long term behavior, looking to complete history more than 10 years uh, with an ATR period of 6,240. You might remember one year. So it's really long term. What do we see here? We see the volatility for seven euro pairs i call it euro pairs because it's always starting with euro and second is um, another um, forex underlying another currency and what we can see here okay as we speak starting as 2020 we we have almost lowest volatility since ever or at least since 2004 that is an alarm signal Low volatility makes trading difficult. We know that. And we have really an extreme situation. The highest volatility is, as we speak, in Euro British pound. Why is it enough here to just have a view on those seven underlines? Later we go for uh, the complete universe, but um, even look for those, it's good enough because you can create your pairs just by comparing two symbols. But anyhow, overall volatility is really low. Let's go a little bit uh, down the time frame, uh, not that huge period. So we just look back to the last two years and still what we see, okay, volatility uh, has been even lower um, in summer last year, but as we speak, highest, as I mentioned already, Euro, British pound, that is confirmed once again. If we even go further down the time frames, uh, looking back for just one month's period, uh, still same kind of behavior. But now we can realize that even that even the British pound comes down once again. Of course, we know uh, the political situation about the Brexit discussion. That's 
more clear what's now happening, at least we think so. Um, anyhow, but still highest volatility uh, is in British pound. What may surprise everybody here is that the lowest one is in Euro um, US dollar. Okay, let's keep that in mind that there we have really quite low volatility. So trading uh, Euro US dollar is not that straightforward uh, as we normally think, but there's a good chance you will see. Now let's have a look to trends. Let's have a look to trends, which I use here, so-called regression percent, which is nothing else than the slope of the chart. So if you think about any chart for a given period, so let's wait for the chart that you can see what I mean. What we always can do is we can take a couple of candles and draw a line, which is a trend line. That is uh, purely mathematics uh, to, to define that line and therefore we get a slope and that slope is represented here. How to interpret this one here? It means that looking for really long term, right now as we speak, we have the highest slope in Euro New Zealand dollar. Okay, that's already a hint for any trading. So if we are interested in a long term trend for anything uh, for Euro um, New Zealand dollar, that is a good chance. On the opposite side, we find Euro Japanese yen, that's the yellow line, which has a lowest, the highest minus uh, slope. And now the trick is quite straightforward. So the best trend at all would be found with a combination of both New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. That would be the one with the highest slope long-term behavior because we are looking um, more on a yearly base. We can shorten that. We can go further down the road and then we see, okay, um, right now, highest slope, Brit, um, Japanese yen, lowest one, New Zealand dollar once again. That's a confirmation. So we have it on the really long term, not that long term. So that gives an opportunity once again. Let's have a view on shorter time frame. Um, just one month back, the um, picture changes a little bit. And um, if we go um, now for next thing uh, of consideration, that are ranges. How big are ranges um, that you can use for range breakouts uh, or for sideward markets? You see that we have a coming down for any any symbol. So that is quite obvious and um, that is even confirmed in shorter time frames. And finally, um, one additional point we have to consider that is always the regression coefficient. That means how good is the trend? So is it really straight or is it is it more uh, ups and downs? So the higher the number, the better is the quality of a trend. And a regression coefficient close to zero means, hey, there is more a random behavior. So knowing that is good, because if it's just random, then we should not go for any trend trade. But now let's try to, to summarize things uh, like that and to get really trading, trading opportunities. And that can be done quite straightforward. Let's start with a real long-term consideration. We have started already a little bit of that as well, but now let's use those kind of tables. Let me introduce what I have in mind here when I now come to conclusions for trading. So on the left side, you see in this case, everything summarized in a long, in a, uh, long table. On the right hand side, I will write down conclusions we can have um, by looking to uh, the left hand side table. So we start here with a real long term consideration. That means everything is measured on a one year base and it's color coded. And let's start with the ATR. Okay, what we see here, if we look for that um, column, that we have the highest uh, volatility 
within the DAX. Uh, don't uh, have in mind uh, GRX Euro is the DAX. I wrote down it here. Um, let's keep, please keep that in mind. So we have the highest volatility on the DAX. Okay, so that's good to know. And uh, the highest, the second highest, and uh, third one uh, would be S and P 500 and gold. So gold seems to be a good opportunity. And now we can look for the range, and we can see the range is quite small for a couple of forex symbols. So trading those in a long-term behavior um, is not good. Not a good idea. Very interesting is what about long-term trends? Okay, that is regression percent, really long-term. And here we can see, once again, our good candidates. And that is already for me, um, we have a hint to go long for the ducks for long-term. So that is, um, that is a really hint to go for ducks long-term, which is really the highest one here, followed by S&P 500. So good idea for S&P 500 and good idea <coughs> for, um, for gold as well. So now we can get an even better confirmation. I mentioned regression coefficient, the higher the better. That means the trend is really good because it's not that much wiggling around, but really long-term. We are looking one year back. And we get a confirmation for all the three we have already in our um, trading table. So, because we have a green here, a green here, and a green here. That is good, and that was derived here for really long-term, let's call it once again, 2000. Um, 6,240, which is a consideration long-term. If we really want to look for other forex symbols, hmm, it doesn't look that good um, to have really long-term activities. But now we can go down the time frames and look whether we find confirmation or maybe new ideas on shorter time frames. So let's look back one quarter, which is a good idea for D1H4 trades, if we find something interesting here. So ATR um, is quite similar range, quite similar regression percent. So that means we have a strong trend. Okay, now we find already something which is not really new, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. I think I mentioned it already uh, with the charts. So that is a good idea for a long, for a, a trade long. That we know because we have a, um, a good um, trend in this case upwards and it's confirmed regression coefficient is um, green, dark green which means the trend is really good. So it's it's not that much wiggling around. Okay, we have that. And same is true um, for the next one, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and same is true for um, S&P 500. Hey, good. So we get a here already a good confirmation and looking for what we have had already for the ducks, it's not that bad to have here once again um, at least a light green for the regression coefficient and uh, regression percent, which means the slope um, for the ducks. So good idea to go long there as well. So that is based on a quarterly consideration. And now we go one step further and we go for uh, looking back one month. And now the picture is changing a little bit. We see that the ATR is now highest for gold and um, for 
for for gold and DAX. Um, not that high anymore for uh, S and P 500, but we now see some some opportunities um, arising here with everything with British pound. Not a surprise. We know British pound um, has the highest ATR. If we now look for trends, okay, let's we get a confirmation once again here for gold going long gold uh, even on that time frame so that is really a very good confirmation to to have that here and we find um not that good for dax because both is yellow and s p 500 hey that's now a confirmation here uh going long here as well but now we can start something new because we we go on shorter time frames now we see new opportunities and i can tell you why and why for me australian dollar swiss raw is a good opportunity with that kind of combination keep in mind regression percent is dark red that means we have a strong slope but now negative so it would be a short trade and we find a high regression coefficient, which means, hey, the trend is really strong. Okay, so that looks like an opportunity uh, that we we um, have a, a trend here as well. So that would mean we we can go, in this case, short for that one. And let's look whether we find other possibilities. And it's not that surprise. The Euro Swiss franc has the same kind of combination. Okay, that would be here that we get something for short on Euro Swiss franc. And any else? Yeah, there. New Zealand dollar. Um, New Zealand dollar um, Swiss franc has the same kind of combination really good going south and have a good trend s p 500 we have already on our table and um, gold we have already on our table final let's go short term we look back just two two weeks backwards now it really comes more to our entries for the trades and even looking for maybe something um we we have um on short term behavior and overall volatility hmm, highest in gold so if you have something which needs high volatility and you would want to act on a short term base gold is best okay that just consideration out of um volatility but let's have a look to trend trend behavior and um, good trends combined with a high regression coefficient which means the trend is really pure so then we find a new opportunity here really on more short term for australian dollar canadian dollar and that would be short because we uh, regression coefficient uh, regression percent is red which means it really goes south and do we have something else yet yeah, we have a good one here short and we have uh anything else once again we have gold high okay it's light green but really strong uh good regression which is always good to have a trend which is really uh there s p 500 no surprise if you look to the chart and uh, confirmation here as well and even for ducks it's both is light green uh we can take that as well now we have a lot of information um just collected from those kind of considerations of highest trends lowest trends atrs in order to to see where we have good volatility if we need that and we can even do something similar with those which have 
which um, are suitable for sideward markets. So if you have a trading strategy, which is best if you don't have a good trend, okay, then, for example, this one would be a very good chance. British pound, Australian dollar. So that would, would be a good choice. It would be even better if um, the, the yellow would be followed with red here. That would be ideal, but mm, it's not that bad. So at least I want to show uh, one other example here for um, the one month's um, consideration. So looking for regression in yellow and best would be a red um, a red in uh, the regression coefficient. And then we would have US dollar, Japanese yen for sidewards. So this one would be a good candidate for sidewards uh, moves. So if you have a strategy for that, this would be the ideal um, candidate. So at least I want to, to, to have a view on other time frames um, once again. So let's have a look. This one would be here. Okay, we would have sidewards Australian dollar, US dollar as a good um, uh, indicator for for that as well. And um, anything else? Uh, let's have a quick view. Um, yeah, here your Euro, US dollar would be one as well. Okay, let's have that, and then let's wrap up everything. We, we have collected and in order to derive our trading possibilities. So starting with sidewards, that means, hey, you need a strategy, maybe with rebuys. Uh, there's no good trends, which is good for that, uh, that you, you open a short trade, for example. Okay, and even if you are on the wrong side, you, you rebuy. Uh, again, a short because if we are really in a sideways, then that doesn't uh, hurt you that much. But it's that's dangerous. I um, we know that, um, and I would not go martingale for that. Definitely no. But at least we can go for those as well. We have really good candidates for some um, short, um, some long trades. So I definitely uh, would say those three are extremely good long candidates and how to do it hmm. now i think it's really up to you look for good entries maybe there there are some pullbacks and then you start your long uh, trade but uh, that is really something we should uh, have in mind and honestly what i like here um, uh, as well is everything with swiss fraud and going short for something uh, like that, uh, that is not uh, that bad. Uh, so we can go here, for example, short or here. For me, it's an or because I would not go both uh, for both um, to the long. S same consideration might be true for uh, going long on DAX and going long on S&P 500. Uh, I personally would just go for one. And in this case, um, if we really look for everything uh, with the best trends for um, for those two indices, I can use another table to have a view on that. And that is just looking for um, the slope, but now here on the different time frames and uh, all everything with regression percent. And you see that um, if I compare those two lines, uh, DAX and S&P 500, then overall there's more green in S&P 500. So that upwards trend is even stronger. Um, so that would be really quite ideal. If you have already now uh, that table here, maybe we can decide between our two short candidates with Swiss Fraud as well uh, to have only one. And that would be those two lines, but there's no difference. So they are both good. We have going down really long term, going down uh, midterm, going down one month ago, going down last two weeks. 
So that is really a strong trending behavior and um, therefore those are ideal candidates uh, for short trade. And just to have a remark on the side words on um, no, we have had one additional side words here that is British pound, Australian dollar, everything is yellow. That means for that pair, we don't have a trend. And um, so that would be the ideal candidate for any side world um, behavior. And I'll remove those because they are not that, um, that good. So, but here we have the best candidate for any side worlds, um trading activity. That's for now. That's everything derived on statistics. We got a good conclusion of what kind of tra uh, trades we might enter. We have a good base for that. And now we can use simple chart analysis in order to do so, if you like. And if you like, you come in next week, same time. And we have a review once again. And let's see what changes. And we derive once again good trading uh, opportunities based on statistics. That's for now. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and good trades. Bye-bye.